Hidden San Francisco, the guide to lost landscapes, unsung heroes, and radical histories. Stop E23, United Farm Workers Against DDT at St. Paul's Church, a church in Valley Streets in Noe Valley. In the 1970s, the United Farm Workers Union had a collective household of full-time urban organizers in the nunnery located in St. Paul's Church at 29th and Noe. Cesar Chavez helped orchestrate the founding of the United Farm Workers Union, the UFW, in California's Central Valley in the wake of the 1965 grape picker strike in Delano. In alliance with Larry Itliong and others, a new alliance of Mexican-American and Filipino-American farm workers was finally forged after years of enmity. After the defeat in Delano, Chavez and the fledgling union's leadership chose to launch a table grape boycott that became one of the most successful consumer boycotts in American history. Chavez put together an unprecedented alliance with environmental groups and consumers. The National Grape Boycott went on for several years before California growers gave in and signed union contracts in 1970 and 71. What is less remembered from that period was the agitation going on in supermarket parking lots on behalf of the Grape Boycott that educated middle and working class shoppers about the severe problem of pesticides on food. The farm workers were being contaminated by DDT and similar poisons, made infamous by Rachel Carson's 1962 Silent Spring. Historian Robert Gordon summarizes Chavez's new awareness, quote, Recognizing the potential appeal of a fight to protect workers, consumers, and the environment, Chavez stated that the issue of the health and safety of farm workers in California and throughout the U.S. is the single most important issue facing the United Farm Workers Union. We have come to realize that the issue of pesticide poisoning is more important today than even wages, end quote. With boycotts and a lawsuit filed in collaboration with the Early Environmental Defense Fund and California Rural Legal Assistance, the UFW was instrumental in getting DDT banned nationally. Growers began replacing those chemicals with organophosphates. Many agricultural pests were developing immunity to DDT by then. But the new pesticides were even more toxic to the workers, albeit quicker to break down in the environment. Because of this, some mainstream environmentalist organizations kept the UFW at arm's length. Nevertheless, the UFW-EDF alliance, though short-lived, was one example of a broad alliance between environmentalists and labor at the start of the 1970s. Emerging out of the battles to pass the Coal Mine Safety and Health Act in 1969, the Occupational Safety and Health Act in 1970, and the National Environmental Protection Act of 1970, rank-and-file workers, along with progressive union and environmental activists, realized that hazardous working conditions, workplace pollution, and the deterioration of the natural environment were closely related. It's telling that the United Auto Workers, United Steel Workers, United Mine Workers, Oil Chemical and Atomic Workers, and the International Association of Machinists worked closely with the Sierra Club, Friends of the Earth, Environmental Action, and others to pass many new laws during the early 1970s. Little wonder that there was so little opposition expressed in Congress given the broad alliance pushing these changes. Perhaps it is also not surprising that the successful alliance of the time was soon torn asunder by the divergent politics that followed the oil price shock and severe recession of the mid-1970s.